good night time, I guess. Good evening. Is this still considered? No. It, well, it's, it's now around maybe like 9, colon 20 p.m. So, whatever. Um, hello. Uh, yeah. I'm still in downtown Ottawa, just off the... Well, the block, just down the block from Parliament Hill, actually. Um, and certain things have happened in the last two hours since me uploading that video. video. Uploaded remarkably quick, actually, given, like, me using data for it. Um, but anyway, uh... Right now, I'm standing on, uh, what is called Nicholas Street, which is right by the Rideau Center, well, shopping center. That, I found out that shopping center across from the cobblestone, uh, cobblestone, like, uh, restaurant area that I will have showed a, uh, well, I will have showed a small clip of it, so I didn't really talk about it, actually, I probably should have. Uh, there's a clip right before I show what I thought was Parliament Hill, but turned out not to be, and just turned out to be a really large, um, very bougie hotel, uh, right by Parliament Hill on the other side of a water canal filtration system of some kind, uh, and... Well, uh, basically, uh, what that was, it was a bit of a marketplace. A marketplace, I say, there was, it was mainly restaurants and some cafes. Uh, there was an ice cream store there. I ate in the ice cream store and also in one of the cafes there that was in a vegetarian and vegan cafe. Um, it was a smaller business. Don't think it's a franchise. My God, was it expensive somewhat. Uh, like $20 for each menu item, almost. Uh... I just got, like, a blueberry shake thing and, uh, poutine with, uh, what they called, um, cashew cheese, which I had never had before. It's pretty damn good. Um, and I'm sure it's probably gotten more health benefits for you than curded cheese, but anyway, um, I don't know. I could be wrong about that. Um, but, um, interestingly enough, I was just sitting out, um... They had these little, like, um, they almost resembled, like, larger, as if they were, like, as if it was public art of, a uh, or a public sculpture of, a uh, hockey puck, which I don't think they were. What I was sitting on to actually take that little snippet shot of that market area, I was sitting on one of those, um, and I already talked about the homeless crisis and all that, and how very apparent it is here in Ottawa. Um, and I will say, today I withdrew a hundred dollars in cash from my bank account. Uh, I now have, uh, well, no cash on me. Because of A, I did buy some things to eat, uh, but mainly because, well, I genuinely couldn't go without, I need, wanted to donate, I wanted to donate to the people here. Like, I, I wanted to, and I couldn't go without. Because goddamn, um, though... I would say there's maybe not as much um, people on the streets here from what I've seen so far as compared to compared to Peterborough and maybe Oshawa. I can definitely say it is so far from what I've seen even worse than Toronto or Mississauga. Which always baffles me. It baffled me when I, well, when I saw 
a the homelessness and also the uh that's an interesting security car oddly designed i don't know what their security for that's not the police uh maybe there's some sort of private security agency so i don't know um Surprised me the crime rate of Peterborough and Oshawa, first times I had ever gone there to both those cities. Um, the homelessness as well, it was very surprising compared to Toronto. Uh, but here in Ottawa, God, it is very... It's funny, uh, this might sound hypocritical of me to say, but um, I literally said this in the last video, how there is no look, in my opinion, to... Um, poverty. There's no look to being poor. But I will, and there isn't, which also plays in the fact that I guess there's technically no look to being rich, which, though, I think there, it's less or so for that. Yeah, I, I think that'd be fair to say then. Because there, well, yes, actually, well, it is obvious that there is no look to being rich. There are actually people who have gained a mass amount of wealth have actually redistributed their wealth or as far as things say and show they have um, and they don't dress in what is considered stereotypical of say elitists uh, like fancy suits and ties tuxedos long uh, silk gown dresses um, uh, cufflinks Rolexes there obviously are those who do many of them who do probably I'd say most but there isn't technically a look to being rich but I will say culturally it seems there is a well not even culture yeah I guess culturally which is a culture I guess hey I'm gonna eat my words one culture that I may in terms of classism that I don't think there's much good element to it is there maybe some? Yeah. Slight. I have to think about it more. But I would say there is definitely a... There's a snobbery behavior. Well, there's behavior and that is of snobbery, basically. That is heavily associated with the ultra-rich. But I will say what I was going to say is where I kind of... I'm going to... I don't want to contradict myself here because I don't want to... I'm not trying to... I believe that there is no look to being homeless. But I will say here, the contrast between, or what I'm noticing, the contrast between having, at least in this area, because this area is closer, <laughs> not very ironically from my political stance to Parliament Hill, <laughs> this area is very uh, wealthy in certain regards. And in other regards, um, well, if you just take a look out on the street, well, no, it, it's literally just individuals who are struggling to even get by, um, it's just surrounded by mass... just a mass bourgeoisie perfect, perfectionist show, basically. Or show of show of bling. Like, showing their materialistic selves. So I will say that at the very least, there is a heavy contrast that can be noticed Especially in the area down a ways on what is called, um, uh, it's named actually the same as this center here, um, Rudeau, uh, Rudeau Street or Road. It's back that way. There's the heavy contrast. Like, I, again, I don't want there to stigmatize it, like, it go exactly against what I just said, but when you actually talk to people, Again, I firmly believe that there is no... Well, 
mainly believe there is no look to homelessness. But I'm just saying, once you actually talk to people and figure out who is struggling financially, and you see those who really aren't, um, you can kind of start to pick up on a pattern, I guess I'll say. And I don't want that... It's iffy, but again, still firmly say that there is no look to homelessness. Um, anyway, so, let me get a better grip on this. This is really bad, the way I'm holding this. There we go. Okay. So. Oh, actually, so my phone right now, last I checked, was at, um, halfway in terms of charge. Uh, so it's about at 30%. Or at least when I started this, it was at 30%. Um, I should quickly mention, though, an interesting fact that I learned um, while I was actually in uh, Crow's Landing. Uh, I was noticing around here a lot of things going under the name, um, especially the center, um, Radu. Or Rideau, I believe is the proper, sorry, the proper pronunciation of it. And I looked up actually in um, Crow's Landing because I was curious to know um, where actually the Prime Minister of Canada's residence, residency is during their time in office. And apparently it's um, off a ways of Parliament Hill. I don't think it's actually in the same, the downtown area here. It might be. Maybe it's actually in the new Edinburgh district, which is across from a little, from a, what I guess is a divot in the Ottawa Canal. But, um, apparently the residency of the Prime Minister and their family, um, is, well, that was a skid from that person's tire, pulling out of the parking garage. It's apparently called, um, uh, Rudo Cottage. Rudo Cottage, and it's where the Prime Minister gives a lot of press conferences from. And with Mr. Trudeau currently being our Prime Minister, gives, in my opinion, a lot of, well, not really press conferences, but he gives, um, um, he sounds like this. Uh, have you ever... Do you remember in, like, kindergarten when that uh, toddler um, would get up on, like, a block and pretend to be, like, the leader of a class during recess? If any of you, like, experienced this, we'd be like, Hey, hey, everyone, look at what I'm... I'm gonna do this thing. Um, I'm gonna do it. And it's gonna be great. And it's gonna be amazing. Like, being very... Trying to be, I guess, the center of attention somewhat. And that's not to demean kids' intelligence. I'm just saying... Like... You know what I mean. Like, say, say like, a toddler who may be... Um, immature is just, like... Wanting to do something... F what they think is, like, fun... For the class by, I guess, either making a fool of themselves... Or actually taking themselves very seriously. Um... Yeah, I'd kin that more to what Justin Trudeau does, rather than calling it a press conference. So. Yeah. Um. I know that might have sound ageist, which would have been very hypocritical of me, but no, I'm not blanketing all children like that. I'm just saying, do you know that one kid? doesn't even have to be kindergarten. Just, do you know that one person in school who was just very attention-seeking or more egotistical in the sense of like, okay, listen up, I'm gonna be the leader of the group, or like, I'm gonna be head of this assignment, this group assignment type thing, or, and they don't really come up with any ideas, but they just, well, talk. Um... Anyway, uh, 
so yeah, I found out if you're wondering what why there's so many things called uh, Rudeau in this area, it's because of the well, actually, I don't know if it's named after Rideau, Rideau Cottage. Um, I don't know what the name's significance is. Um, if it was named after someone, but... Anyway. Uh, so, uh, just thinking of it, the Rideau Cottage is, like, basically, uh, from an international standpoint, it's our version of the White House, from the American standpoint, or of, like, the Kremlin, in, from a Russian standpoint, or things like that. Uh, So, yeah. Um, so what am I doing now? Uh, well, as I said, oh, and I actually, why not just show that? That's a very, that's a very well-lit, uh, is that limestone? I have no clue. A very well-lit stone building. Uh, what does it say on the side there? I cannot read that very well from this distance. I'll have to play back the footage or get across the street and read it. Um, anyway, so where am I going now down, um, why am I going down Nicholas Street? Um, so, after going through this area of the downtown, which wasn't really thoroughly exploring it, but it got to see quite a bit of it. I mean, I'll be coming back to these areas multiple times, hopefully over the next few months. Um, but right now, I'm actually going to see about a possible job option closer to the southwest end of uh, Ottawa. That's a ways across... Uh, well, I have to go across a um, Passover Bridge from a, what looks to be another runoff of the Ottawa River. And also, I just noticed, um, there is no... So if you're living around here, there's no sidewalk. Well, there is a sidewalk, but for some reason there's pavement. Uh, that's like road gravel pavement. Well, I'm just going to very much hope that that was not gunshots. That sounded more like, that sounded more like uh, a muffler blowing a fuse, or blowing out. Well, mufflers don't have fuses, so. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to look at a possible job uh, option. And I have to cross a bridge to get to it, to the part of the city that it's in. And you might be wondering what job option it actually is. Um, well, actually, it is um, stripping. Now, let me cross the road and actually explain more that. Let me get a better angle on this, okay. So. I don't think that um, I really need to do a whole demonstration of like, someone's reaction to me saying that. I think I know the drill by this point. Or maybe not, if people actually, if you know me, considering I logically still aspire to be a pornographer and a video game writer a stock photographer, that's logically, then I don't think that, well, if you know me, then it probably shouldn't come as a major surprise. Um, but you might be thinking just specifically why stripping, or why a strip club? Well, more specific, I'm headed to a strip club in Ottawa. Um, well, mainly because, so here's the thing. Obviously, the only reason I'm here in Ottawa, and the only reason I left Toronto in the first place, as I've explained multiple times, is because of 
an overbearing, devastating to me, existential slash morality crisis. And I've explained, like, I've explained in de more detail in the Before Leaving the College videos my specific, like, questions of ethics and of human existence, really just the existence of any living thing in general, for the most part. Um, I've explained all that, so I'm not going to explain all that again here. But what I will say is, um, if you read the description of my channel, um, and if you, I believe I said it in the Leaving Toronto Alone video, the first video I made on this journey of mine, I said that I've put my... me working towards getting into video game writing, pornography, and stock photography had all been put on hold for the time being. I had just put it to the side and put it on pause because I did not want to... The reason I did that is because I did not want to go into those jobs, those professions that I had... that with my interest in them I had really cherished that I really valued them as work, like, just as, just as, well, concepts. I had valued them heavily. I had had a lot of love for those, those forms of art, or I consider them to be forms of art, or an artistic those artistic careers. And it, um, and why I, I, I but now you might think, well, Cam, you've needed to make money. You've obviously had to take some form of job, jobs. So far on this journey, you had the landscaping job in Crow's Landing, and you had the restaurant job in McCracken's Landing. So, obviously you have to get some form of income to survive, which I'm fully aware of. So, why would you be against, though, while going through these crises, philosophical and psychological crises why would you not just also in certain points pursue your other three desired career paths well because a I like I said I put heavy value and heavy I have a heavy, what's the word? God damn it, dissociation. You really have to strike at the worst times and cause me word finding issues. I, di I didn't pedestal them or anything. I didn't think they were like a superior form of arts or a superior form of work or a severe form of pursued interest of anything, or a hobby, or whatever. I, I didn't see it as that. I had a heavy value for myself with them, I'll just say. I guess I don't know what way to word it right now. It's like, I had so much, I derived so much happiness from those three forms of entertainment. And said career paths. Just even so much as researching them to know more about them for when I wanted to eventually make my way into them. To not for money or anything, not for financial gain, even though yes, that's what it would be providing in some regard, even though I wanted to redistribute my wealth. But so that I could 
make something that I wanted to make with them and also entertain others. Give some, have something for myself and also give something to others. Self-maintaining altruism, as I call it. Having my own self-interest whilst also helping others achieve their goals and wants. So, that's one reason I don't, that's the main reason I, do, I don't want to do it. And also, relating to my moralistic dilemma of my morals and things like that, I didn't, I didn't want to make a move on them in case it severely detrimented someone else by doing so. And I've talked about this in some regard more before, about how I logically before felt one way about art, but now I'm questioning whether art is really even good for the human race, if it's really doing anything at all in terms of not just escapism, but actually trying to make commentary on something, or if it's just talking, just endless talking, doing nothing, and uh, or if, and if it's also just distractions from the problems of the world, or the meaninglessness, the way I see it, and the meaninglessness of life. So I didn't want to make a move on them in that regard, but I'm now also realizing like, I, before it was really, I just didn't want to make a move on much artistic creation at all, which is why, for now, on my channel, um, the video I made, the uh, sketch I made, um, uh, when I tell people I want to be a pornographer and they, they wait, no, that's why I said in the description of that, that would be the last real thing I did for, in terms of, like, planned out entertainment. Like this is obviously, you can consider this entertaining to you, um, or insightful to watch or interesting, but because that's your opinion, that's your, if you find it interesting, that's great. If you don't, then, well, I'm sorry you don't, but, well, that's, your interests don't lie here. Um, but I said in terms of like what I had planned out before to make something with more of like a story structure or trying to actually represent some sort of feeling with the videos themselves um, or doing sketch comedy with them and all that and the skits and all, all that. Um, I just, I don't have it in me anymore. I don't think I can do it well anymore right now. And with my current lifestyle, as I said, um, it's really, it's can't, I, I can't really devote a whole lot of time to it, or at least the way in terms of like what I would want, how I would actually want to pursue it, if you know what I mean. Again, I'm not happy with a single video I've made at all, except for the Minecraft videos that I made at the very beginning of my channel. Um, those are the only ones that I've been entirely happy with. There have been ones in terms of the sketch comedy that have come close to where I think, yeah, it's, I like it, it's good enough, but my damn perfectionism when it comes to artistic creation for myself only, uh, well, I've never been happy almost with any video I've ever made, but that's a problem of mine I gotta work on, and that's one of the reasons actually I don't, that's why I do, one of the reasons I do this channel, but anyway. I'm now realizing as well that I feel that if one day I do decide to enter the pornographic industry, obviously I want, I, I've researched sex work and all that for a long time and various other things relating to it in entertainment or just in society and everything. And, uh, sociology and all that um, but uh, I think though I do need to experience some form of it to get an understand like with this whole journey 
whole theme of it, it seems to be. Get experience. See it firsthand. Now... And I will logically enjoy it. I still do enjoy sexual entertainment. And there is... I have much fascination with strip dancing. Um, as I can get into in a bit. Um, but... I feel I need to... And this is... If I actually get a job at one of the various strip clubs in, um... Ottawa. I may, maybe I won't even be a performer. Uh, I'm gonna try and apply to be a performer. Uh, uh, with setting... Seeing... Actually scoping out... Um, scoping out the business practice. The business practices of each individual or whatever one wants, if they want to take me on. Scoping out as well and discussing with the uh, owners um, and employers what the actual, that business is like in terms of the industry. Um, and also just give my own, like, analysis of the maintenance of the place um, and management and also psychoanalysis as best I can to people in it. Um, we're running it. Um, I will... I, maybe I won't even be a performer. Maybe I could be hired on as a waiter or um, a cook in the kitchen. I don't know. Um, and though, unfortunately, uh, it is, though, in most strip clubs, and again, part of me mainly says that legally I think they should be able to do this, Socially, in terms of, like, like social behavior, I don't think it's good to do in terms of... Well, obviously, if it's a strip club, then... Okay, I think people have the right to wear what they want to wear. But most strip clubs mandate that you wear some sort of, like, very sexual clothes. Like, you wear... No, no, no you're not, not just... Because, again, I've said, I've said in two videos before this that just merely wearing, like, revealing clothes is not inherently sexual or not inherently, the person is not inherently wanting of sex, or sexual interaction in any way. Um, but they mostly mandate that you do have to wear something more physically provocative, I guess I'll say, and revealing. Um, which... It's iffy for me, in that regard. Does the business have the right to mandate that dress code? In how the world is right now, yeah, I think they do. Should they? No. Um, but anyway. And I have no problem with wearing revealing clothing. Like, hell, I... I would usually wear fishnet tights underneath... I wear fishnet tight, tights underneath my jeans and also in with my ripped jeans, um, uh, which in some form, which I, well, is in some form revealing, I guess, skin-wise. But, um, anyway, um, I'll elaborate more on this in a bit. I'm gonna get down a ways, because my phone is dying. I'm gonna try and give it some charge actually make it to the area that I want to be in. So, um... Oh, yeah, and I may be finding a place to sleep out here tonight. Right now, I'm actually not... I don't know who they were honking at, whether it was me or somebody else. Um... I'm going to have to maybe try and find, like I did in Toronto, and also that night in Peterborough, a more inconspicuous place to sleep for the night on the streets. Um... Uh, and also, it is not freezing out. That's probably because I have multiple layers on, both uh, tops and bottoms. So, yeah, that might be one of the reasons why. But, um, yeah, we'll see. I'm going to get down a ways, try and charge my phone, and then um, go from there.
the club that I'm going to specifically tonight uh, closes at 2 a.m. So, seem to have both loads of time. Uh, I'll figure that out when I get there. All right, um, long story short, um, I got off of Nicholas Street by jumping over, I went over a little, like, it was a sidewalk, it was a divider, it was like a concrete divider between the grass and the sidewalk, and I went over it, um, because I looked on Google Maps, and it seemed like Nicholas Street was turning into a highway, which it was, it was, from what I could see, it was turning into, like, it was going to turn off into a freeway. And, uh, yeah, I didn't, there was nothing, there was going to be no place to walk. Along that, over to the area that I'm trying to get to. So, I saw that down here, there was, well, the entrance to a train station. Specifically, Ottawa University train station. I guess, I don't know what, I don't know if it's just called the city train system. I don't know what the name of this train system is. Um, but, um, while walking through here, and I've been just been sitting here for a bit charging my phone, notice this coming in. These very, in my opinion, well-designed and really, really neat, um, laminated 3D portraits, basically, or mounted photographs. They have 3D plastic behind them, and it's of blurred humanistic faces, and they shift depending on, well, the angle that you're standing at. And they all have a word in either French or English to, well, represent something. And I just read the artist's little description over here. There seems to be a lot of these in Ottawa, now that I'm seeing. I'm not going to read the full thing, but I, you can pause it and read it if you want. French and English. And I think the concept is, once again, really damn... Actually, really incredible. I really like the idea of it. And I really like how it's executed. So, from here, some of them have obviously had... They've had wear over the years. This is one at the very end. Um, the... I don't know if this is the outside or the inside of it. Yeah, it's the inside. The the inner 3D um, plastic mold looks like it's just crinkling. But um, we've got some words like release, remember, uh, French rivière. I don't know what that means. Reunité. I'm faking my way through the trends here. Reality. Uh, restless. Renewer. Re reply. Dear. Resonate. Revere. I might have already said that. Resume. Revive. Respect. Restri you, you get the point, basically. Reclaim. Uh, uh, it just goes on and on with this, like, 3D display and shifting, well, the shifting image and shifting word. I think it's really cool. But um, now, unfortunately, I'm met with... I, well, I have to make a choice right now. A bit of a difficult choice for me at the moment. So, I also looked on the map over here, uh, right over there in the corner with my stuff, uh, of the actual train ra railway system and route. And so, there's a Passover bridge that is right... So, I'm right here. It goes along this way. There's a Passover bridge that goes over a part of this canal. Um, canal Rio U. 
Canal. I don't know why it's called White Hats Canal twice. Or unless, oh well, now Redu, Redu Canal. Oh, that might be the French. <laughs> I am an idiot. Um. So it goes over the stretch of water, and uh, it's the closest point for me to get into the actual area. Because apparently, where I am right now in Ottawa. This is an island, actually. There's, you can't really tell because the, well, the water systems that divide the land, the rivers and the canals, are so small. And also they've had many bridges built over them to connect them. But, uh, I'm on an island right now. I don't exactly know what the island is called, but close to it there is... Uh, what's the district of um, Old East Ottawa, which is on an island, I guess it's called Pig Island. It's an interesting name for it. But, uh, oh. That was close. Sorry. This, I'm guessing, is a path for just bikes and scooters and things like that. Um, but, the problem is, okay, so the bridge goes over to the district that I'm trying to get to where the, tri the strip club is. And, um, well, the only problem is you can't really, I don't see any way to walk across it because it's a train bridge. It only has the connecting railway going across it. Um, and that's the closest one. Now, a very nice girl just actually stopped, um, by me and was talking to me. Um, she asked if I needed help because I looked lost. Uh, you can take that. Both literally and metaphorically, I guess, right now. But, um... So, she told me... She didn't know of any way over there to get across to where I want to go. But going down this road here, you can get around a ways to... Some bridge that goes into, uh... Well, Old East Ottawa District, onto the island. The other island. Um, and maybe there'd be a way across... But I looked on the map as well, I go down a ways, not onto the island, and make, uh, it might be a right turn here, uh, for a bit, and then continue down. I can get around, I can go underneath the freeway here, and then loop around, or not loop around, just turn completely around, go to the left on a major road, and it can take me to this park area that has a bridge that goes across, and I just walk through this park area that, um, and if I go up a ways, it'll take me into, uh, well, it'll take me into the area that I want to go to. The problem is, I looked on the map, and, uh, from what it looks like, there is no, uh, lighting system in the park pathways, which is kind of crucial, you know, at night, at least in terms of safety, I'd much rather, well... I would much rather be wanting to walk through there with some sort of lighting system. Now, I have a flashlight, but it's really not going to do me much good. Um, but there, another thing I saw, if I go down further a ways, possibly having to cut through the island, there's a larger bridge that's not in a park, that's not in a park area, um, or it's not on park land. And, uh... It's not a train, it's not a connecting railway bridge. It's a, it's a connecting bridge for, well, for a roadway. Kind of like the one that I had crossed over to get further into downtown, to get into downtown Ottawa, where I was showing in the last video uh, parts of the Ottawa River. Um, so, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna have to pick. I don't wanna have to go on the train so my options are go on the train, like buy a ticket, go on the train, get across, probably fastest. Um, problem for me, my moralistic issues, I am having trouble, like I've said, I don't want to burden people more than I have to. And for the most, and I especially have been really trying to hold that with um, transport workers and people giving me rides. Uh, for the most part, when I can help it, so I don't want to do that, as I feel really awful for it um second option is walk through the dark park the, the dark park paths with only my flashlight in tow 
at well and all my other belongings which i'm gonna have to that's gonna be awkward to hold and i don't want to have to do that um or three find my way to that um road that um a vehicle connecting bridge over into the district that i want to get to so i'm gonna make a decision on that you'll find out what i did in a minute and if i'm still breathing after it uh yeah okay be back when I do whatever I do. So, <laughs> I'm feeling like a real idiot again here, uh, because I am, I was being a doofus, uh, so apparently, this is Pig Island. This is, like, I thought I saw on the map, like, before when I looked on Google Maps that there's a section that gets cut off by this canal here uh apparently i my eyes were deceiving me because god damn it um i was worrying about that and then i looked on it and realized wait a minute this is literally from where i was like all the way downtown to all the way over there is on an island is pig island so and yeah, I again don't know why it's called that because it's not shaped like a pig or anything, but <sighs> literally. So I'm going with the option of C, of just walking to one of the connecting roadway bridges and walking across that on the sidewalk right into the fucking district that I need to be in to get to said strip club. So. Yeah, fuck me. Um, fuck my idiocy. Uh, so yeah, literally, I j I'm, that's where I just was, the, the station. Also, take a moment to look at this. So this is the channel that I was talking about. And my god, it is beautiful, in my opinion. Look at that. They've got the... The globe-shaped lights and it's in all nice row pattern against those trees. They don't have many on this side, they just have the typical North American street lights, but or well yeah, the typical in North America. But God, look at that. And there's also there's a small little connecting walkway up there. And that's over there, right, well, the building there, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not gonna lean too far off over this. If I'm not mistaken, that is uh, Ottawa City Hall. And if it's lined up directly to, if the building is like, was lined up directly to meet like with that point, that end of the park here and the canal, that is gonna be beautiful. And look, you can even see, like, rippling on the water. It's because there's a lot of... Apparently, I've seen a lot of fish jumping out of the water here. There's actual fish swimming through this. Well, obviously... Well, okay, I didn't know... I don't know if this was, like, a human-made canal or what. Um, I mean, it. this is part of... This is what divides this island from that half of... I don't know... I don't know if that side's a larger island, too, or if that's actually the mainland. Um... But, either way, there's fish in here. They're jumping out to get the little, little snacks on little bugs. They're trying to eat little bugs. Trying to gobble up as many as possible before they all start dying out for the season. God, it's really pretty. Oh, that's a big one right there. See that big ripple effect over there? That is so fucking pretty. You know what? If this is, if I scope this area out enough and it's, I deem it, like, safe enough at night, which it seems to be pretty, there's not a lot of, I'm not seeing a lot of, like, suspicious or dangerous activity around here, so, yeah, uh, maybe I'll sleep out here some nights, or on the other side, I don't know, like, if I'm needing to, like, sleep on the streets, um, and not 
staying at someone's place, I may sleep here. I'm not going to sleep here tonight, most likely. I'm not going to walk all the way back from the club that I'm trying to get to. But goddamn, that is so fucking pretty. Yeah, amazing. I'm going to get a shot from down there. Bloody hell, that is gorgeous. That is absolutely stunning. It was all the way down. And yes, I'm pretty sure from where I went. Oh, yep, yep, that's definitely, yeah, I'm seeing more clear. Yep, that's definitely Ottawa City Hall. Um, and right behind it is that very nice looking, but very absolutely elitist uh, fucking hotel. God damn, is it pretty. And it goes along here and it, the canal gets fucking larger. It expands from this side to the next. That's even pretty over there with just the duller street lights. Or just the typical North American standardized street lights. Against this just line of spherical ones. God. I don't know, again, I'm, well, right now I'm seeing some sludge or maybe algae or just seaweed of some kind just in the canal. Or maybe that's grass that's blown off from here after it being cut, I don't know. But, um, I don't know, like, how polluted the Ottawa River is. If this is a very polluted part two, I have no clue. But, um, yeah, that's just, either way, even though it may be very well it might be very mauled down with uh <clears throat> human made mess i don't know but even so it's still beautiful on the surface like well it's beautiful like just it's flawed but beautiful Yeah, that's how I'm gonna word it. God, my word finding issues tonight are really fucking bad. It's cause, oh yeah, I should mention, uh, like I said in the, uh, the commodification of children video, um, <clears throat> I still have strep throat. Uh, yeah, I still have streptococcovirus. So, uh, yeah, it's better today, but at least, terms of how painful my throat is but um yeah <sighs> well let's hope I don't develop pandas uh, okay so if you can't tell I am very exhausted right now I'm dripping sweat because of the constriction in my clothes from all the layers, I am stiffer than a Bhutanese wooden dildo. And I am so incredibly thirsty. But not thirstier than your mama on a Friday night. Boom, got him. Uh, it is completely desolate out that over there is the bridge finally friggin made it to it I'm at the lower end of or I guess the mid to lower end of that island which by the way I'm also another idiot found out this island isn't even called pig's island I was looking at the map and apparently I didn't zoom in far enough on Google Earth and Pig's Island is a tiny little island in the canal. And I don't know what the hell this island is called. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, God. My throat is dry. Doesn't help the cobblestone, like, 
irritation, cobblestone throat from the strep throat. Doesn't help. Uh, I've got about, what time is it? It's 12 colon 17. I've got like an hour to make it to the strip club, which is, oh, well, I got in like maybe an hour and a half. It's still open. I'm really hoping they'll give me water because nowhere, nowhere around here is open. Like in no convenience stores, no restaurants. All establishments on this part of the island are closed at this hour, it seems. And my phone is dying. I'm literally, the charger is in my hand. I'm holding it, it's at 1%. Um, yeah. But even so, I'm powering through this fucking night. Even if I don't get water. I'm gonna try my damnedest, because, uh... Well, didn't come fucking hundreds of miles from Toronto to Ottawa just to die of thirst without a fucking fight. Same goes for freezing to death. So, um, yeah, I gotta get going. Let's hope I get there. Okay, I did something that I absolutely did not want to do. I fucking hell, Charger, just stay in. I call, I'm outside of... A hospital in Ottawa. I'm outside of Ottawa General Riverside. <clears throat> uh, I tried getting here because it was the closest thing. Funnily enough, I ran into another, well, I ran into a homeless person I saw downtown. Uh, just, uh, it was the only person crossing the bridge that I saw. Um, I, I called 911 because this place isn't fucking open. They don't have an emergency room, apparently. It's like, it's just, it's just, this is a campus. It's a medical, it's a medical school campus. A hospital. I didn't want to call them. I didn't want to. I did. That is really putting and dampening on my moral issues right now. But I am fucking thirsty, I had no choice. There was a guy who was around back where I walked in from. He, he directed me to the main entrance. He didn't work here, or at least I don't think he worked here. Uh, the medical unit said that the paramedics would be on their way just to give me water. Absolute note to self. If I am out on the streets like this, I had been collecting bottles from that bakery in Orleans for a fucking reason after I drank that mango juice and apple juice to store water in. Next time, fucking bring water. So, um, what time is it now? It's 12 colon 56. I highly doubt I will be getting to the strip club <laughs> Tonight, I don't fucking care. Um, might as well just sleep on the fucking campus. Here's, oh, there they are. Uh, yeah, there they, there they fucking are. Okay, uh, get back to you when I have hydration. Okay, alright, um, never mind. Apparently, that either wasn't, that ambulance wasn't them. They spit off in a different direction. Um, I just called the medical unit again, branch of 911. Um, they said they're on the ones that are coming to me are en route. They'd be here in five minutes or so. I guess coming from southbound, so that way. <sighs> okay, um, trying to remain calm. It's just, I'm, I'm, obviously I'm very scared, I'm very upset right now, so I'm just trying to... Okay, well the burning in my throat is starting to dissipate. But I'm starting to get a bit of a burning sensation in my stomach. That's not, definitely not good. Ugh, well, come on Thalamus, you can hold out with the thirst. Thalamus is the part of your brain that controls thirst and hunger. 
and stamina. And also plays a part in uh, regulating the meta metabolic and well, the endocrine systems. Oh god, at least last such out. Okay. Maybe I should not talk. I right know. Not talk. But I'm gonna keep the camera on. Also, I'm sorry I, if this seems oh dramatic. I don't care. Um, I am beyond thirsty right now. I didn't want to call them, but <laughs> in the moment, it's not no other option. The only other option would be, it seems, to fucking break a window of the main entrance to the hospital here and just run to the fucking uh, kitchen area and grab whatever water I can for hydration, which I'm not going to do. Okay, I gotta stop talking right now. I'm gonna stop talking. So, suck her up through the silence or skip through it. This is comforting to me. You know what? Fuck it. While I'm waiting, I'm gonna tell a story that just... Is this the fucking gonna be... Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, whatever. It's gonna be angled a different way. Ah, oh, the video's exported. It's well enough. Oh, thank God. There they are. Right here. Right here. Right here. Over here. Okay, hold on. Sorry to have bothered you guys with this. Yeah. I don't want to agitate the stomach or anything like that. 
Okay. Is it okay if we can grab some vital sign on you just to make sure everything's fine? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna check your temperature here. Okay. Then I'll take your blood pressure and your heart rate. All right. I, I kind of would recommend you to get checked out at the hospital, man. Okay. Come on. All right. Um, right now. Other than the, than the sore throat here and feeling thirsty, is there anything else that's been bothering you? Uh, well, not in the immediate. Okay. I do deal with um, psychosomatic illness, but it... Uh, oh, what's your Psychosomatic illness, uh, neurological problems, more specifically. Okay. Related to it. Where does it affect you specifically, though? Uh, really just all over. It, it's varying. Um, it doesn't... Uh, it's not one specific uh, area or oh, symptom, okay. um, but uh, I haven't been having much issues with it recently. Okay. Listen, uh, Toronto is pretty, way, like, pretty far away. Yes, it is. How did you like? Did you like hitchhike all the way here? Uh, no, actually, um, for a week and a half, I slept on the streets of Toronto with these that. that this exact equipment for the most part. Okay. And, uh, so you take a temperature and you do it, okay? Okay. And I purchased a motorized bicycle and, uh, well, rode with my gear out into the countryside up to Stouffville. Okay. I slept in a cornfield for, uh, one night. And then, uh, made my way through good woods, stayed with some relatives for a bit, and then, uh, up through Port Perry into Peterborough. Okay. Slept behind a motel there one night in a sleeping bag. Okay. Then uh, made my way up into Lakefield, broke down in Lakefield. Someone came, uh, someone I knew came to get me, uh, drove me to a cottage that, well, uh, had been, uh, it, it was own, it's owned by people I know. Um, okay. And I had stayed there in a village called Crow's Landing for the entire summer, mainly by myself at points, but uh, people I knew would come up. Okay. And having working a uh, landscaping job and a restaurant job. And then uh, I would drive a golf cart around a local area, but um, I'm, I made my way up here in a van with uh, someone I know. Okay. Alright. Yeah, it's a bit... um. It's a bit convoluted. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a very long story, man, but... You know, if you want to talk about it, I'm all yours, you know? Uh, well, thank you, but, uh, I think it's alright for now. Okay. Um, is it okay if you can just kind of... Mm -hmm. from your arm there? You can get on this here. Can you remind me, uh, your name again? Ah, uh, Cam. Cam. Yeah. Do you have a full code on your business? Yes, yes. Okay. You're very well clothed in this weather condition. Uh, try to delay her up for it. It's a little hot out here. Are you on any daily medication? Uh, no, I'm not. Yeah. Uh, other than... Other than neural? Other than the psychosomatic neurological issues, I'm diagnosed with uh, depression and, uh, well, I deal with somatoform dissociation. Uh, but that's about it for the most part. Okay. So you're obviously not on any medication for any of this, though? Uh, not at the current time. I was before, but not now. Okay. So you can just relax your arm as much as possible. Just let it drop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Do you know the month that we're in right now, Cam? Month that we're in? We're yeah. in uh, October. Okay. And uh, what year? Uh, 2022. Okay. Do you know where you are? What part of the city? area you're in right now? Or in Ottawa, right next to the the Ottawa Riverside Medical Campus, uh, Excellent. Smith Excellent. Road. I don't know the area too well, but Excellent. the district. Yeah, yeah, no, this is perfect. So, blood pressure's fine. So, how's your sore throat right now? How is it? Uh, 
Well, with the water, it's a bit better. My thirst is getting better. Yeah. Uh, still not great, but... Okay. All right. So, obviously not going to kidnap you whatsoever, right? I just want your yeah. well-being for tonight. And I think you are deserving of, you know, staying in a warm place for tonight, especially after being out for so long, right? Um, you do also need to get yourself checked out, right? They can prescribe you any sorts of antibiotics to help you fast and heal and grow so you can help, raise strep throat. Oh, yeah. I think you can definitely benefit from a trip to the hospital, my friend. Okay. What do you think? I'm completely fine with that, okay. honestly, because again, I've been, I have been trying to get a physical from a doctor. Okay. In Ottawa. But. Excellent. All right. So, Cam, we're going to take you in. I just want to check and double uh, um, make sure here. We're going to take you to the mirror of the hospital a little bit. Hospital uh, yeah. General, General Hospital? Okay. Yeah, we'll do a 3 2. Something like that, yeah? Okay. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, just for security measures here, there, Cam. Uh, we're gonna do a. I'm gonna have you wear the seatbelt here, okay? Oh, yeah. We're gonna take you into the general hospital. Okay. It's about like a five minute drive from here. It's closer to downtown, correct? Uh, no, it's just like two, like five minutes away from here. Oh, okay, yeah. I yeah, yeah. Know. Well, it is close to downtown, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna swing that, uh. Oh, yeah. Uh, show, uh, wait, the seatbelt. Okay. Okay. I'm going to run this over your hip. All right. There you go. Any alcohol or drugs involved today? No. No? No. Okay. Your vital signs so far, man, look excellent. There's nothing I'm worried about for your vital signs. Oh, great. Yeah, your temperature was excellent too. Just slightly low. Ah. You know, obviously, the climate can explain a lot. Uh, here or in Toronto, because I'm both. Okay. Oh. okay, you're still in contact with everyone? Uh, many people, yes. Excellent. Oh, I got you like hooked up with all corners. The water is there. Yeah, that's alright. branch of Ottawa General Hospital. I'm in the ER room. Well, not ER, I'm in the emergency room. Waiting area right now. Um, mainly just because the, well, if you heard in the audio from 
the last 10 minutes or so. Um, the incredibly nice um, well, paramedics. Um, well, they helped me out. They gave me water, which is really the only thing that I needed. But after talking with um, them for a bit, they recommended that I actually go to um, the emergency room in the hospital, in a hospital to get myself checked out after me talking about, like, well, before getting in the ambulance, like, briefly explaining, like, why I was where I was and how I got to Ottawa and things like that. Um, and yeah, now I'm here. This has been a very eventful and, um, entirely unexpected night. Maybe just day. Um, They gave me some Tylenol or some acetaminophen uh, pills, and they came and become the uh, this kind of breakable. I guess. circular pills. I was only able to take two. Uh, mainly because I ran out of water. Uh, I can definitely say, you know, I'm not, I'm not feeling terrible um, or anything. It's not like I was dying of thirst, I just say that. It's not like I was dying of dehydration. But I'm sure, given that and the cold temperature, if I didn't get water, obviously, it would have escalated in that. Thankfully, it didn't. Um, yeah. I'm just, um... I'm just a little drowsy right now. Don't think that's from the acetaminophen. I think it's just from this entire day. So, yeah, um, I'll see what happens once I get in to see the doctor. Someone just was talking to the nurse about how long. Well, uh, they've been here since 5 30 in the evening is now 3 14 a.m. in the morning. Yep, that's the Canadian healthcare system for it. But, um, I'm hoping that it's not, I'm not going to be here all night. If I am, hey, at least I have an indoor place to sleep instead of outside. Good morning. <laughs> uh, so, long story short, I end up waiting the whole night in the emergency room, drifting in and out of sleep. Wow, my voice is really deep right now. Um, drifting in and out of sleep. Um, finally got into an area to see a doctor at around, like, I want to say, six thirty-seven in the morning, uh, 
and there was an actual there was an examination table so I slept on that I literally dropped my stuff right on the floor up beside it and I just flopped down on it and fell asleep for about maybe three hours somewhat um, I didn't see the doctor until maybe No, 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 not three hours, two hours. I didn't see the doctor until around maybe nine. Or nine, going 30, so. Um, they talked to me, they checked me out. I honestly, by that point, I didn't even, I wanted to sleep. I didn't even really care or remember what I wanted to ask them. Um, so they just, they checked me out, they looked at my throat, they've given me a prescription for penicillin, which is an antibiotic that's known to help fight, a uh, strep throat. So, um, yeah. I, I completely, though, forgot to ask them about Performing a physical exam on me. Or even just more specifically a neurological exam. Just as a checkup. Uh, yeah. Completely forgotten. Which is what I was kind of hoping for. Because kind of makes the whole trip a little pointless. Well, not entirely because I have a... They filled a prescription for me. <sighs> for penicillin. Which I'm going to try and... get at a pharmacy in the Orleans district if I can. But still. Uh, not... It's been a very long and strange night. Um, and right now, I'm actually outside said hospital across the road in my sleeping bag on in a little little wood patch that's nestled like right smack in the middle of two major roads. The only reason I'm sleeping here is because I was fucking tired and I wanted to maybe just ask one of the hospital attendants if it was alright if I just slept in there like for maybe like three hours. But you know what? I didn't I didn't want to bother them any more than I had. So I was like, fuck it, dragging my stuff out here, setting it up, doing well. If you're curious, this is what I did uh during the week and a half that I was sleeping on the streets of Toronto. At night when I had to, I would find inconspicuous places or what I thought would be more inconspicuous and, uh, yeah, roll out my stuff and sleep. I didn't pitch the tent this time, though. Or, didn't, I didn't bother to. Because, um, well, A, it's the morning, and though it's autumn, there is more warmth coming from the sun. So I didn't expect the temperature to drop very drastically during the day. Was kind of wrong about that, though, because uh, it started to drizzle rain a bit. And I was like, God damn it. Of course. Um, but this is waterproof, this um, sleeping bag. And... Uh, my arm oh. um oh um little pro tip it might my sleeping bag looks like it's bulging like why it looks like it's bulging out it's because pro tip um if you're sleeping on the streets 
or even in the woods, like just camping. Uh, if you can fit it in, put your, at the very least, most valuable belongings in with you in the sleeping bag while you're sleeping. Put them right next to you, like right inside with you. So I have my backpack and the tent in here and my tripod. Uh, and yeah, all the things like that. It's right um, in here with me. Um, so I guess quick story time. I'm um, just to cap this off. I was maybe just gonna say like fuck it, end the video here. Tell it in the next one. Uh, as I said, I was gonna do tell the story while I was waiting for the paramedics. Um, well, a the first thing that happened actually, which was very just another miraculous thing that happened last night. Um, as I was walking across the connecting bridge to. Well, what led me to the um, medical campus, medical school campus. Um, as I said, it was desolate out, like in the area that I was in, there was no one around. Oh, don't you dare start raining harder. Please, come on. Come on, Mother Nature, give it a rest. So, cover my phone a bit, my hand. So, I said it was desolate and walking across the bridge, it was desolate. I was getting very exhausted. Um, but there was one person I saw coming down towards me, walking on the bridge. Um, and I moved out of the way onto the road a bit um, so they could pass because I had a giant ass sleeping bag with me. And we got to each other and they stopped and asked me, I'm sorry, excuse me, um, can you actually point me in the direction of downtown? I'm lost, or I'm a little lost in this area. And I told them, which is true, it was just really, we keep going straight down the road we were, almost all the way, it will take you almost all the way back to close to the downtown area. Because at the very least, the road will take you somewhere close to the canal that you can see, well, City Hall from, in that uh, Chateau Let Air Hotel place, castle thing. Um, but, and they thanked me for that, but then I literally, I said, hey, you look familiar. Did I not see you downtown earlier today? And he was like, yes, like, I recognize you as well. I saw you down... I think it was actually down towards... I might have actually seen him a few times. Not only down in that little um, market area that I showed a quick snippet of. Um, with the cobblestone... Uh, walkway right in... Like, right parallel across... Uh, right across the road from the... Redu Center, but I think I might have also seen them earlier, like closer towards where I started my walk, down in the area with um, a lot of the uh, street art, or the street art that was in the alleyway, and that is really far from here, and I figured, god damn, they must be an avid walker as well, and that we just so happened to cross paths that many times in one day actually now that i'm thinking about it downtown itself i saw a lot of people of a few times like that i thought went in completely different directions somehow ended up in the same area that i was like in downtown so yeah that was and i asked them hey do you know of any place that's open right now because i'm extremely thirsty i need water and he just told me, the best I could say is, 
um, just try knocking on people's doors, houses, usually most of them are very nice, or at the very least will give you some form of water, or something to hydrate you, uh, so that's what they recommended, but I was close, closest to that <sighs> medical campus, so I went there. And while the rest is history, you will know when this is uploaded how exactly that went. Uh, but the story, that wasn't actually the story I wanted to tell. The story I wanted to tell, though, was downtown yesterday, now. When I was... When I'd come back to the little market area across from the Redou Center, or the Rideau Center from the, uh, from looking at, well, from looking over the Ottawa River into Gatineau and, uh, just, just pissing on the Parliament, uh, from where I was standing, like, verbally pissing on them, but... Uh, when I, I went back to that, um, market, and while sitting there, uh, a man came up to me as, which in that one day was very common, a very common occurrence for me, uh, he came up and asked if I just had some change or anything that I could spare, because he was trying, well, he's fallen on hard times, He's trying to feed his four-year-old son, <laughs> and I gave him, well, I gave him money, uh, and he was incredibly grateful for it, and we got to talking, and he told me how he was a immigrant from Kenya, um, and how well, basically just things had not gone so well for him in terms of uh, employment. Mainly due to the fact that he suffers from uh, schizophrenia. And... He, um, he was telling me... Well, he was just basically thanking me so much and wishing that I had had a happy Thanksgiving and he was asking me, like, how it was... Thanksgiving for me, and I was talking to him about how it was very good, it was very nice for me personally, um, and he asked if I was, given all the stuff I was carrying, if I was facing hard times too, and I told him a bit of my story, being semi-homeless and nomadic traveler from Toronto, and, well, we got to know each other quite well. Well, well enough in that brief period of time. So, um, and he told me if you ever need anything or want to talk, uh, I'm usually in this area, so you can try and find me, which I want to try and find him again and actually speak to him. Hell, maybe if he's up for an interview, I can try and, uh, provide him one similar to what I did with, uh, did, how, I did for Sean Ferguson, um, yeah, and then, uh, he, uh, gave me a hug twice, because he was very thankful, and obviously I was I, I accepted the hug. It was very nice. I'm very happy that I met him. Hopefully I'm able to find him again down there. Well, I mean, hey, given the fact that I could find that r one random guy uh, all the way in, like, the very edge of the downtown area, like, leaving the downtown area, getting off of the island that encompasses a big portion of 
downtown Ottawa. I'm sure I can try and track him down. Okay, um... Oh, ah. I'm gonna upload this. And then, um... Yeah, I'm gonna... Oh, by the way, uh, quick, quickly, just to state, because I talked about this in the last video I uploaded about stigmatizing the, the homeless. Um, in regards to this guy, he didn't, from what just he described, he didn't have difficulty finding employment because he had anything such as manic schizophrenia. And even if he did, I would have fucking empathy for him, but I think people should. But no, it seemed more just like people's prejudice or employer's prejudice towards him mentioning that he has that mental disorder and then being like, no, 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 we don't want you. Uh, we have someone else. Basically, we think will be more stable for the job, which is sad. So I'm going to upload this. Then I'm going to get going. I think that strip club is open at least six days a week. I don't know. They close at 2 a.m. Well, I'll find out. Once I get walking and pack up my stuff and give my phone a bit more charge. Um, yeah. See you then.